Hello and welcome back to my Factorial 1.0 tutorial series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again. Uh, we are back here about where we left off. I've let the circuit network uh, research here finish and I've crafted a few uh, just things we need, some inserters and, and some power poles and such. And uh, today what we're going to work on uh, primarily is getting things ready for the next science pack, it being the military one. Uh, there's a fair bit to do for this, so it's highly unlikely we're going to get the pack itself made, but we might. Uh, but again, much like the logistic one, uh, the intermediates are where most of the work comes in. So uh, even getting some of those done will be a large accomplishment. But before we do any of that, uh, I want to touch on the circuit network, like I mentioned I would last episode, uh, in this episode and uh, kind of show you some very basic things that can be done with it. Now, I do have on my channel a standalone circuit network tutorial that I made quite a long time ago, but everything in it is still relevant, uh, and it covers the most basic things, uh, basically what I'm going to show you here, plus quite a bit more, if you do want to look into that. Uh, but what we're going to use this for here is to do with this box. Uh, so the first things first is we've unlocked this, and this gave us quite a few things. This gave us some wires of two different colors, uh, three combinator machines, a power switch, and a programmable speaker. Uh, we're actually not going to use any of this right now, or for quite a while, or maybe ever, uh, but uh, these basically allow you to do like mathematical operations and output uh, signals and, and things from those. Uh, this allows you to just output some basic signals. Uh, this is actually quite useful. Uh, this it has more to do with your power than ne necessarily the circuit network. Uh, this lets you basically separate your uh, your power networks and turn them on and off, like, like dis disconnect one part of it from the other uh, without having to manually pick up power poles or anything. Uh, as you can see there, it says use to control the connections of electric network and can also be controlled by the circuit network. And then the speaker is something you can use to play sounds and noises or even music if you combine them correctly uh, throughout your world or, or even in, in a general vicinity and we might use this later uh, but these wires are what we're going to use right now so looking at these in the menu they're in the logistics section with all this uh, we have red wire and green wire and they are used to connect machines to the circuit network using left mouse button uh, a very important thing here is these work absolutely identical to each other uh, the only difference being is that they are two different colors, meaning they can transmit two si different signals at the same time. This is a little hard to explain without showing it uh, in practice, but uh, the, the function of them is absolutely the same. Uh, it's, it's mostly just because when you start messing with this stuff, if I just make one of these, uh, you will see a red and a green input on them here. You can see a little green input there and a little red one here. And uh, this is so you can have like two different signals coming in at once because if you send two in on the same color while, uh, wire, excuse me, they're going to uh, actually be like combined together, which a lot of times is what you don't want. Uh, so that's why there are two different colors. Uh, in this case, we're only going to use one color and I'm just going to use red here. Very simple to make a circuit and some cable. And like I said last episode, we could simply just cap this with this uh, manual thing here. Uh, but we can actually go a little more advanced than that now with the circuit network. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this in our hand and you left click and you don't need to like hold left click. Um, you just left click and then left click again on the thing you want to connect it to. In this case, it's going to be the box. So I left clicked the inserter and I'm going to left click the box. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, click the inserter. Now you could hit Q to deselect what it's connected to if you want a separate connection. Uh, I could have just... Uh, you know, drug this across, but we're going to connect from the box to this inserter. Uh, so now both these inserters are essentially reading this box. They now have the ability to see the contents of this box and have a condition based off that. Uh, normally, inserters uh, can't really see the contents of a box. Like, obviously, if you hard cap it, uh, they won't go past that cap, so they can see it in that regard. Uh, but when you connect them to the circuit network, you can see here it's read contents. Uh, and this allows them to have more advanced conditions based on this. So now if we click on inserter, there's this whole menu here that's been pulled up. If you, if you compare this to say this inserter, uh, you can't do that over here. You can click this, but it will just say nothing's connected. Uh, so we now have all these options. You can set to enable or disable. You can set the stack size of the inserter. I think I did mention before 
that uh, inserters have a stack size you can set. We actually don't have that unlocked yet, so this is kind of irrelevant. Uh, but this allows you to change the size of, of or the amount of things they can pick up at once uh, with the circuit network. And then you can use this to actually read their hand contents, what's in their hand and what they're moving. It can be quite useful. We're not going to use that yet. Uh, any of these we do use later on, I will go into much more detail because, again, they are a lot better shown in practice. Um, so we're going to just have it enable or disable this inserter based on a condition. Uh, so what we're going to do here uh, is we're going to first off set this one. So this one that puts belt in here, we're going to click here, and this allows us to select an item. And we're going to select belt because this is what we're making. So in most cases, you'll want to select what you're making at some point in a process. Uh, whether it be the initial thing or farther down the road, depending on what you're trying to set. Uh, and then we have these different conditions. We can do less than, which is what's defaulting and what we want. You can do more than, you can do equal than, more than or less than, or sorry, more than or equal than, less than or equal than, and then this is equal. I, I forget what this one is. Uh, this one, I never, I never really use this one. Uh, this is like, not it's equals or something I believe uh, this one is I think not really used very commonly uh, I do apologize I, for not knowing this one uh, I, I really never use it myself uh, maybe I'll put I'll look on the wiki and post a comment in, in, down below that that explains what this one is uh, but these are really the only ones you'll be using a lot if you use this at all uh, so we're gonna do less than here uh, I think these should, these ideally for me, an ideal situation would be these actually say what they are. Some, you know, a lot of them you, you will know just because you've, you know, taken math classes or, or stuff like that. Uh, and really this one I should know. Uh, like I said, I never use it, so I, I don't have it memorized. Um, but we're going to say belt is less than uh, a certain amount. And in this case, we're going to say, uh, for now, we're going to say 250. You can set this to whatever you want. You can make it huge. Uh, you can also set this by dragging. I, know, I like typing in the number. It's just a lot easier, a lot more accurate. And then we're going to say set. So now we have this condition set. So what this has basically done is this has told this inserter that it is allowed to put items uh, in here until uh, or, or as long as there are less than 250 transport belts in this box. So obviously as soon as it gets to 250, uh, it's going to stop putting things in. Uh, now again, you could just achieve this by creating a manual uh, block here, uh, but obviously this isn't as accurate. Uh, you, you, you could fine tune this and say until there's 216 and this will stop at 216, whereas you can't really set that in here. Um, and then also, we're actually going to do this and do it a little bit opposite. Uh, and for this particular scenario, this isn't as necessary. Um, for me, this would be a lot more necessary for something uh, like pipe production. Uh, but for this, we'll do it just for example. Uh, again, we're going to base this off belt because that's what we're working with. Uh, and we're actually going to switch this now to more than. And we're going to say 100. So what this has done, as you may or may not be able to tell, is this has told this inserter that it cannot work it cannot take anything out of here unless there is more than 100 in here. Uh, so basically, this is, is this is just making a situation where um, there's guaranteed to always be at least 100 in here. Because uh, otherwise, if I had not done that, this will just take belt in uh, from this until it uh, makes the amount of splitters we need it to make. And, uh, you know, again, in the grand scheme of things for this setup, it's not as important. But... If I wanted, say, some belt, like right after this started working, there's not going to be any because it's just going to be sticking them all into here to make all the splitters we need. Uh, whereas this, it's, a good, it's actually going to wait to take any to make splitters until there's at least 100 belt in here, which, again, you may or may not want. Uh, this would be a lot more useful, like I said, for something like pipes uh, because a lot of times I will want, uh, like, normal pipes um, instead of all of them going into underground pipes for a long time. Uh, but we're going to do this, and then of course we need somewhere for these to output. And we could do another circuit condition here um, for these boxes. This is not a great place to put that. Um, we're going, but we're not going to. There's again, this is not necessary in this condition. Uh, here we can simply just block this out. Uh, later on, we may 
do a circuit network condition because we may actually be pulling from this to make a higher level transport belt, uh, like the red transport belt, which we've not unlocked yet. Uh, but for now, this is sufficient. And once we feed these, uh, this the materials it needs, uh, then it will be good to go. So let's go ahead and feed it these, and then we can work on the things for military science. So hopefully uh, that gives you a bit of a taste of the circuit network. Uh, you really don't have to use it, in my opinion. Uh, it can make things a lot easier. It can be a lot of fun. Uh, and, and I think the basics there should get you a way you can do all type of things with, with just those, those very basics of uh, telling inserters when they can and can't work. Uh, so I believe we need gears on this one. Let's go ahead and fortunately underground this. I don't usually like to underground the uh, main bus. I like to underground the things that cross the main bus. I'll go into that in a second here. Uh, but actually what we're going to do, uh, so this is, this needs to be circuits. This middle one needs to be iron. That one's gears. So let's go ahead and get this iron brought over here just like this we're gonna have to unfortunately move our nice powerful setup we had done get that there and then this guy is going to split off right here and this is a little messy this will become a lot cleaner once we actually get all our belts run the way we need to because then we can arrange it properly uh, but the reason I like to underground the uh, crossovers the things that cross the bus as our power runs out um, rather than the bus itself is because once you get a lot of lanes it's obviously less undergrounds to do an underground every four belts than it is to underground like 30 belts if that makes sense because undergrounding every single bus lane is going to be a lot more than sticking an underground that crosses four lanes at once for your crossover I hope that makes sense uh, it it saves some belt it's not necessary. Uh, we're actually, so we're out of coal. Uh, this is a slight problem, but this is a good example of uh, why I like to use burner inserters. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to get our coal uh, set up first before we turn back on power. And we're going to reposition this one here and make sure he's powered like so. And now we just kind of stick a little bit of coal in here doesn't need to be much I could just stick I have enough I could just stick like half a stack in here honestly uh, but uh, this this will demonstrate why I like to use burner inserters here so this is gonna very quickly run out of coal in fact it's gonna run out of coal before coal even gets here and I'm purposely doing that because I want to show you the difference uh, so these are out of coal uh, we now have almost no power and we now have no power uh, if we used electric inserters we would be in a very bad spot because we would now have no power and have to jump start it again however the burner inserters fuel themselves so they can now jump start power themselves despite us not having power uh, and this is why I like to use this uh, I like to use these because I mean obviously I could have just put more coal in here and this would not be an issue but you may not have that luxury uh, so this is a perfect example of why I like to use burner inserters because they will fuel themselves and don't actually need electricity, meaning that they can jump start from a bad situation like that. Of course, I did have to come down here manually jump start it, but uh, even then, if you run out of coal again, they can go ahead and take care of that. Uh, let's actually reroute this a little bit here. So we may end up running out again. I think we actually may want more miners on this. This is um, just at least to catch it up a little bit. This unfortunately is a awkward mix of resources here. Uh, and then let's just quickly add one more of these. I don't think we actually needed more power, but I do want to be prepared. Let's get that hooked up there make sure this is hooked up. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now let's work on stuff for our military science. So we need piercing rounds, we need grenades, and we need walls. Uh, we could really start with any of these, uh, honestly. Uh, some of them are going to need other things we haven't made yet. So 
these piercing rounds, for example, are going to need steel. We've not made steel yet. Uh, and then grenades. We do have coal. We don't have it anywhere on our main bus, though. So we probably would want to add that. Uh, I don't always add it. Sometimes I just route it into the build itself, maybe from like behind the build. Uh, but I think just for fun, uh, maybe, or just for the example of, of teaching, we can add this the coal to the bus. Uh, but let's work on steel, because we will need steel here very soon. Uh, steel is something we're going to need for a lot of other things. It will allow us to make some better armor as well. Uh, so steel setup is typically the way I like to do it. I'm going to add some more miners here to iron. Uh, is different than the iron setup. And there's a little bit that goes into this. This may end up taking a little bit of time, but hopefully you guys can take something useful away from from this setup that we're going to do here. So uh, there, there's kind of several different ways you could do this. Uh, you could just send your iron plate from your iron smelter into a identical smelter uh, design-wise that makes steel, because steel only takes iron. Uh, it does take a lot of iron, it takes five, and it also takes a long time to craft. It's 16 seconds. Uh, opposed to the 3.2 seconds of iron. Uh, however, this creates a nice ratio uh, of 5 to 1, meaning basically that, or, or well, 1 to 1. This It's 5 to 1, meaning you need 5 iron for 1 steel. But um, in terms of actual smelting, it is a 1 to 1 ratio of smelters, meaning that you uh, one smelter making iron plate can supply one smelter making steel. And the reasoning for this is that 3.2 times 5 is 16 seconds. So, or is six, well, 16, 16 seconds in this case. Uh, and this needs five plates. So basically, in the time it takes to make five plates uh, to supply this, this has made one steel, which makes it a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, so you could just send this directly in. I personally haven't done that for a very long time. I like to have a dedicated steel setup that basically creates steel from ore. Um, so it makes the iron plates on site and then puts those directly into the steel furnaces. Uh, because one thing you will learn, uh, or may already have an inkling of, based on the recipe, is steel takes a ton of iron. It takes a large, large setup to make enough steel. Um, so that's why I like having it dedicated, because otherwise I would very quickly end up using like the majority of my smelters uh, just just for steel. So let me just add these here and then we will get building. There is a setup I like to do. Uh, I, I do want to throw in a disclaimer that this is not my setup. I did not come up with this setup. Uh, in fact, at this point in, in Factorio's history, I would say a lot of setups most people haven't come like, like most um, most builds you'll see a lot of people use is not something they made, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think one of the great things about Factorio is all the builds that are shared. Uh, you know, like obviously my science builds I made up because I made them up on the spot. Uh, but the steel setup is something that uh, some some speedrunners of the game I think are originally made, and the the way I'm going to use it is not the like. The purpose I use it for is not the same purpose they use it for. I want to throw in that clarification. Uh, but I like it because it's pretty simple. It's straightforward. It's small in the grand scheme of things. And let's just start it like right here. Because this is, of course, our last iron setup. The others are above it. Uh, and we are going to encroach a bit on our steam. Um, but in all honesty, we probably will need to move this anyway. Uh, I would rather move this team down here than put our steel smelter like out here and interfere with our bus. So I'm just going to do this here. And we're going to run these in a straight line, much like we are doing with our iron setup. You can obviously very easily see that uh, this is much longer. And it's because of the long craft time it takes that uh, we need a very large build of this to make even, even a like reasonable amount of steel. And we're going to run a belt along this side. And we're also going to run a belt along this side. And so far, this seems pretty normal, pretty straightforward. Uh, however, there's going to be some tricks that come in here uh, that 
make this quite a bit different. So these smelters right here are going to be making iron plate, much like these. And also like these, this is going to just be a shared line of iron ore and coal. So these are going to make the iron plate. Let's throw one more on here just for evenness. And what they're going to do is they're going to directly insert. We took advantage of this direct insertion uh, in one of our other builds here, I believe, this green circuit build. So we kind of know how that works. We need to pick up more iron. We, of course, are very low on iron. That's a pretty common issue uh, you'll find playing the game. So these are going to directly insert into here like that. She make some more of these. That will be the, this will be the next thing inserters we need to add to our hub or mall. Uh, this is where it changes though. So the thing is, for steel, we need iron, which we're getting, uh, but then we also need coal just so the furnaces can work. Uh, now, one thing we could do is we could add a whole other belt here and we could use some of these long-handed inserters and, and then have it just output on this belt and that's perfectly fine. Uh, it, of course, uses uh, an, an additional belt and more space and these long-hand inserters which are you know slightly more expensive because they take the previous the normal inserter um, So what we're gonna do is not really like some fancy trick or something, but it's just quite a bit different um, We're actually going to share this belt. This is going to be both an input and an output belt uh, Which is something we haven't really experienced yet uh, Where this is going to input coal, but it's also going to act as the output for steel so we're actually going to have inserters facing two different directions, as you can see here, on each furnace. So this is going to be a completely solid line of inserters down this row of smelters, because one needs to input the coal, and the other needs to output the steel. And this is actually a fantastic example of taking advantage of the uh, behavior of inserters, uh, being that they will always output on the far side of a belt. Uh, if this were not the case, this would not work, uh, or at least would not work well at all, comparatively. Uh, but because of this behavior, we know that steel is the output of steel is always going to be on this far outside lane of the belt. Um, so we can safely put coal on the inside lane and know 100% that you know unless we like mess with something or, or, or something that, that in this setup we know 100 percent that the two resources coal and steel are never going to be mixed on the belt and cause issues uh, because the coal if we make sure it goes on the close side will obviously stay on that side uh, and we can accomplish that by simply just side loading it on here uh, as we've shown before side loading and then because we know the inserters will always place on the far side of the belt, we know that the steel is never going to end up on the close side of the belt and mix with the coal. Okay, and now, so then we achieve a belt that is both input and output. It does use a lot of inserters, but we would have pretty much used this amount anyway. Somewhat it has been long handed. Uh, now, of course, the coal is still going to flow down here, and we don't want coal on our steel line uh, into the bus. So now we can take advantage of the filter ability in splitters. And I'm actually going to push this forward a bit because I know this setup is going to need to be even longer. Uh, in fact, we're going to have an issue where this is potentially uh, longer than we have room for here. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is another good example though of why I don't build on the other side because technically, even though it would extend past these builds, it can actually just go all the way until we would need our steel line tie-in. Uh, but we're going to place this and bring this over. Uh, and now we can go click on this and we can make a filter, an output filter. And we're going to filter it for steel. And it doesn't really matter what side it goes out of. Um, we'll just say this side. Uh, and this means that the coal is not going to proceed past this point because we're filtering it only for steel. Uh, and, you know, if we put this here, then, then coal would maybe come out here, but we aren't going to do that. So the coal will stop here, uh, the half lane of it, and then the half lane of steel will be shifted over here and output here by itself with no contamination. So that um, that is how we will achieve our solid lane of steel, or well, technically half a lane, but the important thing is there will not be coal mixed in. Uh, 
so now let's decide where we want this to go. Well, we have our two lanes of gears, which is, again, I think is a bit ambitious, but we'll leave it as is. We have our circuits. We need to leave another two spaces, remember, so we can run our underground belts. And then we're going to do steel and some other things. Uh, but actually, I'm only going to do one lane of steel. And this may seem like like it's contradicting what I said before about, you know, leaving enough, you know, making sure you have enough of things um, and, and preparing for the future. But like I said, steel takes a ton of iron. It takes a very long time and you will probably, it'll be a, a very big feat to uh, actually fill a belt of steel. Uh, th this is one thing I can pretty much guarantee you, uh, especially as a new player. You will struggle, you will have a very hard time, I would imagine, filling an entire belt of steel, fully compressed of steel. Um, so this is why I'm only doing one belt, uh, because this is actually a massive amount of production we're going to need to fill this belt. Uh, it's it's like, it's well over 100 furnaces, easily. Uh, there, there is an exact number, uh, I cover it in my uh, small thing ratios tutorial, a standalone tutorial on my channel. Uh, Perhaps next episode I'll throw the number out there. I, I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. I want to say it's it's like 117 furnaces per side of a belt. So we would actually need like 200 and something long. Or maybe it's just 100 and something, 117 or something by itself. Uh, I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. Uh, it's it's over 100. I, I, I know that for a fact. Uh, so... It's, uh, it's, it's huge. So that's why I'm only doing one belt of it, because honestly, uh, we'll be lucky if we fill the one belt. I'm going to add more miners here, because uh, we're running still a bit low on iron, and we also know we're going to need more iron ore to feed that steel. Uh, also, I'm researching the electrical energy distribution research, because this gives us medium electric poles, uh, which, uh, while not necessary for the steel setup, they make it much much cleaner and much easier to provide electricity to everything so uh, I'm, I'm trying to get that before we actually get the steel online uh, and we actually do need more iron love this problem you'll, you'll find this problem a lot where you need more iron to get more iron or, or any other material for that matter now this is of course is backed up I just haven't picked it up here uh, so again can taking advantage of our holding control and left clicking and dragging I can just steal all the uh, iron out of these furnaces, which is quite nice, and I'll just hold F over this belt and pick everything up here. Uh, I think we very much could use some more labs, though, so I'm going to grab some of these circuits, because uh, I do not want to handcraft the circuits. And we're going to make a few more labs. Now let's make sure our belts are working. Uh, they are, in fact, so we should have, we have 50 uh, splitters, take about half of these for now. Uh, we'll take all the undergrounds, I think we use undergrounds more, and I will take uh, I'll take all the belts and this is you know just in practice again you can see this is not taking belt from here at this point because um, even though this does need to make more splitters because it hasn't reached 100 once it does this will start working and this can also be indicated by the little green light here that this one uh, its condition is go basically it's in a condition that says you know you can operate and this one with the red light means that its condition has not been met yet that this is not over 100 so it can't work so that's kind of another visual indicator there you can use. Uh, let's go add these labs down. I'm going to actually make a couple more here. I'm going to grab some gears. Uh, so steel is a fairly big thing. Like I said, uh, it, the intermediates are, are where a lot of the work is in things. So steel is going to open up so many options for us, though. Uh, setting up steel is actually... A a pretty big process. Uh, now that that will be set up once we get these power poles, um, it's pretty straightforward to make the ingredients for military science walls. You need some stone brick, which is pretty straightforward. That's just simply some smelted stone. Uh, and then grenades, we have everything. We have coal, obviously, and we have iron plate. Uh, just a matter of getting them to where they need to go. And then the piercing rounds, uh, the only thing we didn't have made uh, was steel. Uh, so now we just need to make firearm magazines, which are very simple, being just iron. Uh, we'll figure out a little ratio there. It's very simple. Uh, and then copper and then the steel, which we will have here shortly. So 
I feel like next episode, uh, despite it seeming like we didn't accomplish a lot this episode, uh, next episode, uh, we should be able to get military, I would say, completely done? Maybe a little ambitious. If, we're, if I work very efficiently, um, I, I think we should certainly be able to get military science done next episode. Or very, very close to it. Uh, steel, I, I would say getting steel set up in and of itself is actually a pretty big accomplishment. Uh, now, obviously, this would have gone up faster if I didn't explain it, but that's that's why we're in a tutorial. I'd like to explain everything. So, from this point, uh, I mean, we, we can we can pre-set up some stuff. We, we can start working on things. Um, you know, so, for example, uh, I think I, I would like my military to... Uh, go here just so it's close to the science. Um, so we're actually going to place the buildings down for military science uh, machines before we build the things for them. Uh, and in fact, I'm actually going to ghost place them. I'm going to take advantage of this ghost placing feature again. Uh, before we do that, though, let's figure out how many we need. Uh, well, we want one a second, and uh, it takes 10 seconds, so we can just divide. Uh, the amount of time it takes by the amount this crafts. In this case, it actually gives us two. It's another one of those recipes where you need to pay attention to the amount it gives you, much like cable, because uh, you you previously worked with it just giving you one. It can be easy to just think this gives you one. Uh, this actually gives you two, uh, as do, I believe, all the science packs after this. So, except space science, but that's a whole much, much later. Um, so this actually gives us two per craft. So normally, if I wanted one a second and I was going off of base craft rate, I would actually want 10 machines, uh, much like we did with these. But since it actually gives us double the output of these, we can cut that machine count in half, only needing five. Uh, so I'm gonna pick this up, hold shift and ghost place. We're gonna ghost place five of these down. Uh, and I'm gonna just ghost place some belt. I can actually just place it. Um, I'm ghost placing the assemblers because they're a bit harder to make. I don't really wanna waste them just sitting here belt we're already making in mass uh, and this has three inputs which means we're actually going to need two belts inputting the ingredients right because each belt can only carry two different types of items uh, unless you really mix them up which I really don't like doing uh, so one of these is going to be two of the items the other one is going to be the other one item and we'll take advantage of long-handed inserters here uh, and then now we can kind of start figuring out the rest of our builds so again leaving plenty of space uh, I'm going to, let's make this ammo, and then maybe we'll call it an episode. I'm actually starting to lose my voice. I'm not sure if you can tell, getting a little raspy. I streamed earlier today, uh, and I think my allergies are a bit bad, so <clears throat> I apologize if I'm a little raspy. Uh, so looking here, uh, the ratio for this is really quite simple. Uh, it takes three seconds to craft and needs one firearm magazine. So we need one every three seconds, uh, and this takes one second and makes one. Uh, so on the time it takes to make a piercing round, we've made three firearm magazines, right? If, if we have one machine doing this, which then means that we can actually support three machines making piercing round magazines with one machine making this. Since it makes three in the time it takes for one of these to make, we can actually support three machines. So uh, we're going to build something that looks a bit like this. Oh, wrong recipe there. And this guy is going to just pick up some iron probably from right here. And then it's gonna output these uh, piercing round magazines, uh, right, or the, sorry, the normal magazines here and the piercing round magazines will then pick up from this belt. And then we're going to have one more belt here for the uh, inputs. And then we're going to have an output belt that comes over here just like that. So again, taking advantage of long-handed inserters here. So this is going to be a shared belt of copper and steel, since those are the two things we're missing. And uh, we may actually do fast inserters here. It does take three seconds, but it needs six ingredients total, the five copper plus the one steel. Uh, so we may want to just do fast inserters there to be safe. And I think this is probably a good place to uh, end this episode really quickly, though. Uh, I want to make just a tiny bit of steel so I can make a uh, power pull or two and just uh, show you how uh, why <clears throat> excuse me show you why this th these medium poles work perfectly for this setup 
as you can see, this takes a very long time. <laughs> uh, once we get some better furnaces, this will be a bit quicker uh, because the furnaces will craft faster. Uh, also, uh, just I don't think I've actually done this yet. Uh, if you go in here, you can actually manually place things. And here, I'm just right-clicking to place one at a time. Um, so, there we go. Um, I'm actually control right-clicking to take everything back out. But just right-click, put one thing in at a time. Don't really need to use that much. So we can craft two of these now. They do require iron sticks. Uh, so with these, uh, we would have to actually have like three of these, like this, like everywhere. You know, we'd have to do something like this to power this, which is not bad. It just uses a lot of power pulls. It's a lot of messy power lines. However, with these, you know, that we've unlocked and made, uh, these actually have a supply area of seven by seven, opposed to the five by five, uh, which means we can place these in the middle and they will supply everything. The inserters on the outside, obviously the middle, and then the outside here. And we can space them out this way as well. Well, actually, well, right here. We don't need them as close, but we do need them here. Uh, and this, the, these just down the middle will supply the entire thing. So that's why I like to try to get those first, just uh, just kind of manually make, uh, quote unquote, manually make a little steel here. So we can make a few of these to get this going. Uh, I, think, I think these just work significantly better. Uh, we're actually going to split this off and bring this over here uh, for this. And then I think we're going to just split one more time here. Uh, this does need to be iron as well. So we're going to take advantage again of side loading and do that. It doesn't really matter which side color iron's on. This will obviously be the iron right here. Of course, coming over through this way. And... It, the coals here and then the steel will output onto this far side and there we go i think this is a good place to call before i completely lose my voice uh we got the at least the assembling machines placed for the piercing ammunition and we can just look at the splitter here as you can see not letting coal buy which is exactly how we want this to work and uh next episode i really am confident we can probably get very very close get all the intermediates done at the very least and maybe get military science complete as well so there we go guys uh touched on the circuit network a little bit hopefully that made sense got some steel set up uh, i explained this uh design here hopefully that uh, gave you some ideas some insights into your your own builds uh, feel free to copy this as well if you like there's nothing wrong with that and uh, if you have any questions or thoughts, uh, do leave them below. I really enjoy reading them, and I really appreciate your feedback. And if you if you did enjoy if you, uh, and such, please leave a like so other people can uh, find this and hopefully find it helpful too, especially newer players. If you are new, I hope you're having a fantastic time with the game. It's so much fun. I hope you're enjoying the content. And uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, feel free to subscribe uh, for you know notifications and to keep up with all the new content that's coming out. Uh, there will be a lot of it for 1.0 here. Anyway, take care, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, feedback down below, as always. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.